Welcome to Conscious Conversations, a place where East meets West, a place where conversations and ideas will challenge your minds, expand your consciousness, awaken your heart, and make you think more deeply about yourself and the world. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm Anthony Perfetta here, as always, with co-host Wes Gordon. How are you doing today, Wes? Awesome. Excellent. Good. Got a full house today. I'm loving it. We do, and the laughter has started already. (laughs) And we are here today with two very special guests, Duncan Bowen and Nancy Soluk. Thank you both for being here today. Great to be here. We look forward to talking to both of you. You're welcome. And before we do get into it, let us just say, on behalf of both me and Wes, thank you both for being the sponsors yes, of the show. Very much. They were, are running the Ancient Healings Conference, which will take place in July up in Melbourne, Florida, and we'll talk more about that at the end. But today we are talking about something that you're very knowledgeable of, the ancient mystery schools. Now, throughout humanity, I guess for as, maybe as long as humanity has been on this planet, there's always been a search for, I guess you could say meaning, a search for something beyond, and maybe even what some people would call the search for religious experiences, connecting with God, maybe even a safe passage into the afterlife, all these sort of things. And the in the ancient, many ancient cultures, that knowledge was known as mystery or mystery schools and they sort of popped up really everywhere around the world um and i now you can explain this probably better than me but i do know that there were ancient mystery schools of egypt and the egyptians and the hermetics and you know even in um in, in tibet and even uh, many of them flourished in ancient greece and ancient rome like the uh <laughs> One of my favorites might be the Dionysus Mystery School because, you know, Bacchus and God of Wine, and they seem to be very fun loving, <laughs> jovial people who did a lot of what some might call very fun, interesting things. Right. <laughs> but um, can you explain a little bit more about what really the mystery schools are, Duncan? Right. The mystery schools came out of Atlantis. Most okay. people know Atlantis was a continent island in the Atlantic Ocean many million years ago. And um, they were a high advanced society, sort of like we are today in many ways, probably more advanced than we are. And there was a faction that was developing there and a negativity. And uh, they were exploring activities that were electronic and crystalline possibilities that were dangerous. And so there was another faction there in Atlantis, and they were the oracles, the priests, the the spiritual people that foresaw what was coming. They saw that the their island was going to be uh, swallowed up in the ocean; it was going to disappear. So the oracles and the spiritual, mystical people wanted to save what they had learned over the millennia of time. Okay. So they started sending out expeditions around the world, so that whenever the island was going to disappear, that their culture, their uh, spiritual training would be saved. Yeah. So they sent out seven expeditions over thousands of years the first one went to tibet so okay. that was the first mystery school that landed in the high alps of the you know the tibet Himalaya mountains. mountains yep and the the next one <clears throat> went to uh, there were seven places they went over time to different places around the world to anchor that energy and they would travel around to different locations to see if the energy was right so they probably were basing on ley lines and different energy grid systems okay. to do that uh, they landed in africa in the congo of africa now, if we try to find that school now, we'd probably be eaten up by animals and snakes and bugs and whatever else if we were able to find that mystery school that still exists today. Um, the next one went to Romania, into the mountains of Romania. Um, the next one went to uh, Japan. Okay. England. Actually, right. actually, it's located in London of England. Wow. Mystery school. Uh, we have... Australia. Nancy is an expert on the Australian one. She it's has... out in the outback over near Uluru. Okay. And it is wow. completely cloaked, so you can't find it. Right. But they are still very active. Wow. Yeah. But an outsider isn't just going to be able to get into it. It's You have to be invited in. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. And that was something I was going to ask you all. To, did you mention the seven? Not yet. I haven't okay. finished the seven. So, <laughs> yeah. so we have Japan okay. and the Mount Kurama. Uh, it's uh, located there. And then the last school is in the Rocky Mountains of the United States. Oh, really? So that's the American Mystery School. So it's anchored in the high mountains of the Rockies. And um, all the schools are what are 
consider closed they're private so you can't go to england and go knock 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 hey i want to see this cool here take a class uh, but you can do that in the united states in really? 1997 because the united states was in such a mess that it was decided that they need to go public oh, wow. and so we went public with the teachings okay okay and so it, public t means that we're able to talk about it on the radio show we're able to talk about it in classrooms and publicize it but anywhere else in the world it's it's sacred it's uh private for the safety of the teaching and the people right. in those countries because okay. they could be you know abused or taken advantage of that sort of thing right but in the united states we have different people take uh open up centers or uh, light centers or counseling centers or you know meditation centers whatever you want to call them and in those centers there's training and classes and we initiate people into the ancient mystery teachings wow. so yeah so it's been around for lots of years and it, it the seven schools uh, create a battery or a grid around the united states around the world excuse me sure. and and that grid uh, provides that anchor. So they're still there. They still exist. Uh, it's hard to get uh, in touch with them. You, if you wanted to go, say, explore Tibet, you'd probably have to go visit on the astral okay. because you wouldn't be able to find, find it, it in the human form. Right. It's cloaked. It's um, you know protected in many of these different places. Oh, very interesting. And um, when you were <laughs> when you were first talking about Atlantis and them all going out on expeditions, it actually brought to mind a song by Donovan where he actually talks about Atlantis and them all going out. But I didn't know Romania was actually one of the places yes, that they ended the up Romanian going. school is referred to as the craftsman. Okay. And the craftsmen, uh, they make devices. Their hand with their hands and apparatuses, they can have some device and they can scan you and and figure out what's going on with your energy and what might be lacking or you need more products, more oils or healings and different kinds of things sure. like that. Wow. That's very interesting. Now, uh, I know you said, you know, you can't go knock on the doors. And one thing that I did know about the ancient mystery schools was they were called mystery because that word comes from the ancient Greek, which means to close. And it meant to anyone that was taking these teachings, you were supposed to keep your mouth closed. They were like secret. They were only supposed to be shared with certain people who were known as initiates. Right. So is that <clears throat> the same today that people that want to... Uh, enter this path they would still be sort of initiate into the practice and become initiates <clears throat> right in the olden days um they would teach people in the streets or on the steps of the temples of right, the mystery yes. schools and so that would be the public teachings and if somebody kind of resonated with that material then they would be invited into the temple to go further into the teachings and so that's the same as we do today we do public uh, workshops and trainings okay. to try to teach people a little bit about it. If they have an interest, then come on in, take another class, take another class. And then you know, take other, start going down particular paths that are initiation type of issues. Um, and then when you get initiated, then that takes you deeper into the mysteries, as I call it. Okay. So uh, being quiet means that you're taught things that the average person may not be ready for. So the deeper you go, the higher you go, right. the more uh, intense, more powerful, the material becomes so you wouldn't want to take uh, an analogy would be to take information from college and go give it to your five-year-old okay <laughs> so you want to educate in the same way and we're doing that in the same way building upon layer uh, of information opening up uh, energy vortexes and different things of uh, becoming more active in our abilities to channel the energy and to heal others and help others. Right. That's wonderful. Really nice. And Nancy, uh, since you're the expert on the Australia <laughs> school, mm -hmm. uh, what, did, what was like that, their knowledge there, what were they sharing or learning? They are the keepers of the earth. Okay. Um, they are the protectors and the healers of the earth. They work with the song lines and the ley lines to send energy throughout the earth to heal it and bring all to one and to raise the vibration. Um, on December 21st, we were able to use the energy of Earth to activate Uluru, which is in the center of Australia, which activated the energy, which is now starting to connect all of the sacred sites around the world to raise the vibration of Earth. Wow. That's very so that cool. we can raise with it. Now, does that <laughs> school have anything to do with their indigenous, like Aboriginal people yes. and anything like that? Because I know that they have records that they say they've been there for over like 10,000 years. Like some of the oldest records go back to 50,000. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 50,000 years. They've, they've been actively <clears throat> keeping the earth safe and walking the earth. And it's, um, 
their energy and their DNA just it pushes us forward. Wow. That's very cool. But I think we need to take a quick break here. Please stay with us. We'll learn more about the mystery schools, maybe even what some of these mystery teachings are when we come back. So please stay tuned. I know you're going to love it as we continue this conversation. Welcome back to Conscious Conversations. I'm Anthony Perfetta here, of course, always with Wes Gordon. And today we have two very special guests, Duncan Bowen and Nancy Solok. And we're talking about the ancient mystery schools. So Wes, do you have any questions or Oh no, I'm just Thoughts? totally fascinated. <laughs> the more I learn about these two and this, this, you know, the group, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. My, I'm naturally curious. I don't want to be close-minded to anything, and I can feel a lot of energy in what they're saying. So, right. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. So then, turning it back to you guys, if someone is going to enter this path of the initiate and enter the mystery schools are you able to share with the listeners and viewers some of the things that maybe they'll be learning some of the secret knowledge that is taught right. in these schools well there's three different paths but we also offer um different classes which i'll get to in a second but the three paths are the initiatory that you're referring to the first path is the healer path okay one that you can become a healer and a teacher of uh, different energies uh helping people on emotional spiritual uh, mental, physical level to uh, to provide healing techniques for them to grow and change. Um, the second path is the path of the ritual master, or which would be similar to an un another terminology, shamanism. Okay. So it's the shaman path, of working behind the scenes, working on the darker side, darker the darker energies. Um, the, the ritual master is not really seen, but always working to help clear up things in the world. Okay. And then the third path of the school is the Kabbalah path, understanding the tree of life and then, uh, understanding how we're uh, this tree of life that we emanate this energy and that that explains all the aspects of God as it explains all the aspects of ourselves. Okay. So those are the three paths and there's classes you take and move up. Nancy can talk about some of the smaller classes that we offer to the general public if they just wanted to come in and take a two or three hour class. Okay. We have some of those. Sure, but before you do, just for the viewers who might not know, when you're speaking of the Kabbalah, you're talking about the Tree of Life from Jewish mysticism? Yes. And that, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. So what we do is we have some basic classes that anyone can come in and begin their their learning process. We have astral travel, which teaches you how to travel safely and to go back and forth and not bring anything home with you. <laughs> uh, we have sacred geometry, which teaches you how to use all of the sacred shapes in your life and and to grow with that geometry in your auric system. Like the platonic solids and all of those are even more like Metatron's cube it, and it all is. that. It is, that's that's a little bit more than this. This is actually activating those sacred shapes, the sacred pyramid, the sacred sphere, and the sacred cube in your auric field so that you can actually bring forward the strength of, of God. Within you, yeah. Within you. Nice. And bring it out and protect yourself with it. Right. So That's needed. <laughs> it, it is, and it's it's really it's a wonderful thing to to be able to do. Um, we do classes uh, to help you wake up your spiritual intuition, and to help you protect yourself from any unseen energies that you don't want around you. So we can teach you how to protect yourself and how to kind of grow all of your different gifts. Right everybody has different gifts it's just a matter of finding what your gift is and letting it grow yeah i love that you said that because i'm a firm believer that we all have gifts and talents and things that we bring into this world and as you know sometimes we're aware sometimes we're not and so mm -hmm. these classes and these workshops and all of these teachings can help us to strengthen that and really in many ways help us find our purpose mm -hmm. yeah. it's absolutely it's a, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful way to live right yeah, the, the teachings and the classes and the different paths are all about getting to know ourselves better okay. and opening up and connecting with that light within and connecting with the light of God. So it's actually just turning our lights up and helping other people turn up their own light. lights and, and 
become that light worker or bigger, stronger light worker in this world, holding it and being able to maintain it, which is real important. So the ultimate thing is to know thyself. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's our, sort of like our motto. Yes. You know, know thyself and the better we're able to know ourselves, we can help others in that process. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in that. I mean, for thousands of years, we've all been told to know ourselves in some way, shape or form. You can find that in every tradition, every culture, every faith, every philosophy. And, you know, even when I'm sharing um, meditation practices with people, I tell them it's a journey of self-discovery so that you can help to know yourself better. Yeah, yeah. And so all these teachings that help us to do that, I believe, are very important. Right. So the mystery schools are, is one path, uh, just like you have other paths and everybody has a different path that they can follow. This, this ancient mystery school training works with a lot of people and they connect and you want to follow it through. For me, um, you know, I've been studying since I was 15, the metaphysical esoteric kinds of concepts. And then when I finally found the mystery schools, which was difficult to find because uh, it was <laughs> hidden up until 1997, um, when I finally locked, in, locked into it, I felt like the material was very real because it, it had an energetic uh, substance to it. Right. And so when it had that lock in, that it kept for a while. It's not like taking a class, oh, that was a great weekend class, and then you forget about it in a week or two. And yes. This stuff is still alive within me. I still can feel it, and I work with it. And so you that bring was... it into your everyday life. Yeah. And, and that's where it becomes wisdom, I believe. Because prior to that, you're just learning things, maybe memorizing some techniques and gaining knowledge. But until we actually apply that stuff into our lives and in our world, I don't believe we fully grasp and have really... We, I believe what we need is the direct experience of what these things can do for us. Right. So now, is there, once someone becomes the initiate, is it just a um, one thing and go, or are there different levels, or how does somebody progress? And also, if you want to share, uh, how did you find school? <laughs> well, as, as I said, um, I learned about him when I was 18. Okay. That was back in... I don't know, 60s maybe, 1960s. And um, so anyway, I w continued on my training and read about them, but I could never find the information about it. And they went public in 1997 in the United States. Okay. Um, and it wasn't until about 10 years ago that I kind of uh, fell upon it with a friend over in Orlando when I was living there for a period of time. Came back and said, oh, I went through this really cool class and they talked about this and that, something about the mystery schools. And I went, what? <laughs> you know, I, I, I stopped him right there. I, I want to know more. Right. And so we made an appointment. And I made him take me over there because okay. I knew it was like, this is it. It's what I've been waiting for, looking for. Cool. So it was very exciting to finally find that. You know, in, in the healer path, there's uh, three physical initiations, okay. first degree, secondary, and third degree uh, of physical initiations. Beyond that, it takes place on the astral. We can't do that any further. In the uh, uh, ritual mastery path, there's three initiations, physical initiations there too. Okay. And any further take place on the astral as you develop further. In the Kabbalah path, there are no initiations. It's more of a, a study, a oh, lifelong the... study of understanding the Kabbalah and, and how to activate those centers within us to yes. activate them with our connection to God. Nice, beautiful. And now I know that the two of you are working hard, diligently, and very uh, busy bringing together many different healing teachers and practices and um, different putting together speakers and workshops for an upcoming conference that we have here in Florida, in Melbourne, Florida, at the Melbourne Auditorium, and it's called the Ancient Healings Conference. Yes. So could you share a little bit about what that is? Right. It's a concept that I came up with a few years ago. I've been putting on conferences for many years. Uh, the last one I put on was about in the 1990s where I brought uh, Wayne Dyer to Brevard County wow. uh, to the Melbourne Auditorium where we're going to have our conference this July. And so it was always trying to bring, bring more and more people for us to educate the public and heal the public so that they can carry it out. So the Ancient Healings Conference was a concept that I developed to bring all these different modalities together and uh, have a good time in the two-day weekend, three-day weekend, so that people can grow and have lots of fun. So it's all about different healing modalities, bringing like-minded people together, share that information, and then have exhibitors. Nancy can talk about the exhibitors here. <laughs> uh, you know, so we can have a good time. We're gonna have uh, three classes of workshops going on at the same time all day for two days. So we're gonna have about wow. 30 hours worth of training and education going on. That's a and lot of knowledge. It's all part of the admission fee. So it's all part of that, plus the exhibits. Plus we've got, uh, we've got a very large exhibitor floor and it is from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. both days. July, so, 10th, and July 10th and 11th. And it's, we're, 
What it's going to have these? a it's going to have a lot of different exhibitors. We've got crystals, we've got healers, we've got artists. Um, singing bowls. We've got singing <laughs> bowls. By the way, the singing bowls have just confirmed they will be there on July 10th and 11th. <laughs> and we have the great honor. You have agreed to be one of our speakers. Well, thank you. And exhibitors. That is an honor so what me. will you be talking about? Um, I'll actually be talking about the power of Tantra and Mantra and how it's a power for transformation of oneself. So thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I really look forward to that. Um, I was at the first one you both did, and that was like two years ago now because yeah, 2018 last year wasn't able 2020 to be done. didn't exist. Yeah, well, yeah, we can just all pretend that that you know time is relative, so yeah. <laughs> we can all pretend that that didn't happen. But uh, that was a wonderful experience, and I know Wes was there too, and you really yeah, enjoyed it was it awesome. Also. It it felt like family. Yeah, it's very did. strange because I never met you guys before in that group, and when I was there for those days, I was like, wow. And I was amazed how many people made connections there, yes. from the attendees to the exhibitors to our speakers. Everybody had a great time, and it accomplished my goal. Right. Good. Really good. Good, good. And I hope that all of you listening out there will join us at the Ancient Healing Conference July 10th and 11th in Melbourne, Florida, so that you can see what it's like to enter into um, this conference and create new friends, create new family, and really walk away with a lot uh, so I was just about to say and walk away with a lot of new knowledge information and learn a lot of great things that have been shared for thousands of years so we look forward to you being there you can learn about who the speakers are and get your tickets at ancienthealingsconference.com that's ancienthealingsconference.com and if you want to be vendors they're still accepting vendor applications and you can call 321-543 Eight 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 two. Once again, that's three two one five four three eight 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 two. So if you have something to sell and you'd like to be a part of it, please call them and sign up now. Thank you all so much. We appreciate both of you being here talking about okay. this. We're truly appreciative of you being a sponsor of our show. Thank you both and everybody out there. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the descriptions below, or you know, reach out to Nancy and Duncan, and they can find you up in Sa Indian Harbor Beach. Satellite Beach. Satellite Beach. You can find them there. So thank you. Look forward to talking to you next week, and we hope that each and every one of your days is truly filled with an abundance of love, happiness, and peace.